So let's get started. Our first speaker, come on up. Our first speaker is uh, Jeffrey Z. Klein, an author and former journalist who worked as a writer and editor at the New York Times and the Village Voice. He currently works as an editor for Verso Books. He's the author or co-author of several books about hockey, a memoir about growing up in North Buffalo, three short plays that have been produced by the Alleyway Theater, a story anthology on a Canadian collection of short fiction, and the Niagara Frontier Heritage Moments series of one-minute uh, programs that have aired on WBFO radio. He's currently working on, if, he's, if he has any extra time, he's currently working on a graphic history of Buffalo as a maritime port. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks, Joy. Thanks for coming. Hello. Uh, again, I'm Jeff Z. Klein on this side of the peace grade and the other side of Jeff Z. Klein. Um, uh, before I begin, uh, I should say as a dual citizen of the U.S. and Canada that I uh, recognize and acknowledge that we're uh, the traditional lands of the Sunny Jeff of the Sunny Confederacy. Before that, the Monroe, Erie, and Neutral Peoples. Now, as you can probably tell from the title, I've chosen uh, Book and Dano. By the way, how many, how many of you are old enough to know what that refers to, Book and Dano? Hawaii 5.0. Very, very good. The original, the original Hawaii 5.0. Um, so you can probably tell I've been around for a while. Uh, so some of the advice I give might seem a little bit dated, but uh, I think it may, st may still have relevance. I hope it's helpful to you. Uh, so let's go to this first <laughs> book. These are some of the books I've written. Um, you can see most of them are about hockey. The National Geographic book there is an exception. Uh, when I started my career 40 years ago, I decided that my end to writing would be hockey, a subject I liked and knew well. Uh, it, it did wind up pigeonholing me to a certain degree. Um, I probably should have chosen baseball or something, because in the U.S., hockey just doesn't is not very popular, as you probably know. It did make me a bit of a cult figure in the Canada. Um, most of these books I wrote, I actually co-wrote many of these books. I co-wrote my friend from Sweet Home High School, Carl Eric Wright, he's not here today. He's still around in East Aurora. Uh, very talented guy. So now, uh, here's two more, here's two uh, short story collections I was apologizing. I had a short story in that book on the left, which is, uh, Canadian fiction anthology about hockey. The one on the right is, um, of course, the Great Buffalo Anthology by, uh, edited by Jody Beal, a UB journalism professor. Um, these illustrate, I think, the two ways you get published. For the Canadian book, I was basically chosen by my friend uh, in Toronto. He said, write a story for us, so I said, okay. So that was one way. And the other way, the, the uh, Buffalo book, I submitted a blind submission to, he got chosen. So that's the two ways you can get published. Uh, either it's not who you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know on the left, or you know, keep your eyes peeled for, for calls for submission. Okay, so then the next slide. Those well, are a few short plays. By the way, do you know who these two women are in the recognizing? They're the uh, Statues of Liberty on top of the Liberty Bank building. They <laughs> played from 2018. Now this play uh, yeah, was produced at the Alloway Theater, um, and um, that was again that was a blind submission by me. Um, so that was uh, that kind of got me in the mix of the Alleyway, and I've written a couple more plays since then. And this here, by the way, this is a beautiful illustration, isn't it? Yeah. It's um, from 1932. It's the uh, marks the centennial of Buffalo's incorporation of the city. Uh, this was uh, one of the illustrations we did uh, in, in connection with the uh, Niagara Frontier Heritage Moments on WBFO Radio, one minute radio plays uh, that you may have heard over the years on WBFO about uh, local uh, history. Um, again, this was a blind submission. Uh, it wasn't even a, a call for it, we just decided to go for it and got chosen. So now back we go. Okay, so my first, bit of, my, my first piece of advice for writers is keep your eyes peeled for calls for submission or just submit stuff out of the blue for yourself. Make sure, but if you do, make sure that what you're submitting is in a tip-top shape. So go over it and over it and over it. Um, 
honing and polishing each time until it seems flawless to you. I mean, it's got to make total sense, got to flow smoothly, has to never be boring, and your spelling and grammar and syntax must be correct. I can't emphasize that enough. It's basic stuff. A lot of people may think, ah, well, what's the difference? You really, in order to be credible, you have to have excellent spelling and syntax. So be sure that you have a couple of people looking at it after you, before you do anything with it. But we'll get back to that in more detail later. My second piece of advice for writers is the best way to become a pro writer is to move to New York or Toronto. I know that's not very easy for most of us. But if you want to become a pro writer, you go to a city where publishing is an industry. Like if you want to be a car designer, you go to Detroit, or if you want to be a software designer, you go to Silicon Valley. Same thing with New York or Toronto. Now back in my day, all the publishing houses and magazines, newspapers were in New York. They're still there, but it's not a growth industry anymore, as you know. Um, I went to college in New York, and I kind of stuck around and uh, got a job with Simon Schuster as a proofreader and um, an editor, a uh, copy editor. Um, this is, I, how did I get that job? I had a friend who worked there. Uh, this, this is the thing about being in a city where there is uh, already a uh, you know, publishing industry is that there's networks and, and just people you know can recommend you for jobs or can get you jobs. There's, there's no question about the, the value of that. Um, after, after the Simon Schuster, I got a job at a small publishing house on my own. Then I got a gig of the copy editing the Village Voice but through a friend. Um, eventually I became sports editor there. And, uh, Village Voice was a magical place. You got to hang out with writers like Matt Hentoff and Robert Criscow. And you know, take smoking breaks and smoke them on with Coles and Whitehead, who's a good analogy. Fantastic place. Uh, eventually, I wound up in the New York Times, where I worked as an editor on several desks sports desk, travel desk, and a foreign desk. I wound up as a national hockey writer because I was in Buffalo. And it turns out that the only people who write about hockey in the United States are from Buffalo, Pittsburgh, or Boston. So um, they chose me. Uh, so if you, if you go to the New York Times website and look at my name, Jeff Z. Klein, you'll see all the hundreds of articles I wrote there. Please don't look too closely, though, because corrections are pending. Yeah. We're not really that. OK, so now, sorry, one second. Here, here we go. I got started many years ago. And how you might get started now? Uh, so a few years ago, I would have said, get a job in a newspaper in New York or Buffalo or anywhere because you work with words every day and get better and better at editing and writing. And you're working against tight deadlines. There's no time to be blocked or too fussy because you cannot miss a deadline. You must produce. But of course, newspapers are dying. Certainly here in Buffalo, they're pretty much dead, unfortunately. So that's out. You can write for the web, that's highly exploited, as you may know. In other words, they pay pennies. But don't worry, all is not lost. Here's what you should do. Learn how to edit, learn how to write. And learn by doing. By editing, and by editing, I mean learn grammar through and through. Learn the importance of concision, of short sentences, of not rambling on. <clears throat> of, uh, you gotta learn consistency, right down to when to spell out numbers, when to use new rules instead. All those little rules you gotta learn, you gotta know. Do it over and over and over again. You wanna be a good violinist, you have to practice violin. You wanna be a good carpenter, you have to work with wood. If you wanna be a great writer, you have to work with words. It's certainly true for writing anything. So there's that. Let's say you've already got something you've written. How many of you have something that you've already written? Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, uh, uh, if you haven't gotten, if you're thinking of submitting it somewhere, getting it published, Somehow, you've um, you've got to make sure it's good, of course. You just can't you just can't go on your own, you know, and your own feelings about it. You have to give it to someone else. I'm telling you, you need a good editor. No matter how great a writer you are, even if you're Joyce Carol Oates, you need a good editor. If you don't know one, find one. Even if you, even if you find them online, even if, you have, even if you have to hire them, because there's nothing like it. You need someone to go over your work. It's a very basic nuts and bolts thing. I can tell you how important, I can't tell you how important it is. You need someone to catch any errors, typos, grammar, spelling, stylistic inconsistencies. 
inconsistencies, inconsistencies of logic, lapses in tone, offensive language, that acts on or otherwise. You need someone to tell you about it. You need, and you also need someone to tell you if it's actually too dull or if it isn't working for whatever reason, or if it's really great. You need someone there who really knows what you're talking about. You can go over your work. Uh, I work as a book editor, and recently I had the pleasure of working on two books with a guy in Minneapolis. His special talent, his special reason for writing, was that he was America's and the United States' greatest bandy player. Bandy is a sport uh, most of us don't know about. It's, uh, it's like hockey. It's played outside of, uh, on, a, on a field the size of a soccer field, all covered nice. You know, you got skates, a loop ball, big pull, and it's very popular in um, Soviet in Russia, former Soviet countries and Norway, Sweden, and Finland. So he, he's, as the U.S. best player, he's, his uh, career has taken him across Siberia, Sweden, Finland, playing coach. He might have read a book about it. He might have read about all his experiences. So he did, and he gave it to me to edit because I knew him from when I read the article about him 10 or 12 years ago. I polished up the stories, and he self, he, he, we, tried, we tried pitching it to a publishing house, but publishing you know, houses thought, well, bad, you just, no one knows about it in the U.S., no one cares. So we wound up self-publishing it. And it's done very well indeed, because he knows, uh, he knows his audience in Minnesota, where he's from, and in Sweden, Finland, Russia, where he's translating to Russian. So he's breaking even on this self-publishing thing. Uh, it's a, it's a, the stories in it are great, but also because the quality of the book in terms of writing, because I went over it, is, is like, you know, professional grade. It's not, there's no typos in it, there's no weird lapses of grammar in my dad. Um, he also made the second book about his daughter, who's a pro hockey player in Sweden, who, who uh, forged her career despite a heart condition. Um, and again, he's self-publishing that, in, and it's very popular in Minnesota, because again, Minnesota has this huge, huge hockey culture and girls' hockey culture. He knows his audience and uh, he's a great feed on that book too. Um, sorry, one second. Lost my place. Um, Excuse, excuse that last there. So now 20 or 30 years ago when I was getting published, the book industry was much different than it is today. Um, back then, uh, we found an agent, this is in the 1980s, we found an agent to, uh, to uh, publish our first book. And uh, we basically did the equivalent of a Google search. We went to a book that had agents and found some people and talked to them and they took our proposal. Um, the book agent was a very important person to, uh, then and now still for my publish. Um, he or she will be someone who um, can hone your proposal to a fine point, and then he or she knows where to go with the proposal. Whether to go to you know, the publishing house is best suited. The proposal itself will consist of, say, 10 pages in which you. Uh, in which you describe the outline of the book, the chapter by chapter outline. You also describe the audience as um, that intended for and why of itself. And, uh, and then um, the agent submits it to the publishing house. Um, you, may, you may still be able to do that today, but it's much harder than it was in my day. Um, so there's a self publishing route that you can take. Um, which I hope someone else will be able to talk about later today. Yes. All right, so, uh, so that's pretty much it for me. Um, let me just give you my, uh, here's my email. Any questions, please, uh, please. If you have any questions, you want to come down here and ask her. You want me to run over there? Let's do that. Let's see, can you come down? Yeah. Just probably two or three minutes of questions. I'm just wondering if you're available, we could hire you, and if so, how much did you charge? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, um, sure. Use my email. Um, uh, 
아니 아마 이제 새로 오시고 When you start editing the book about Bandy, the one guy, yeah. what did that involve? Did that involve like more than just manner or did it like making the story a little bit better? Than yeah, that? yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, maybe I shouldn't uh, overemphasize grammar at the expense of uh, you know, flow. But um, yeah, he, he, he had an incredible memory, this guy. He remembers every, every detail. He'd write it down. Sometimes it got to be like dull, you know, what time it was. So you say, well, I mean, it's rambling on a bit. Maybe cut it out. It was very memorable to that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, yeah, editing, editing is basically being not only correcting but also being a critic, I guess. If you're writing uh, a book with a specific focus, yeah. Um, an editor, obviously, you say is very important. How does one go about seeking one that might be compatible with the focus that you are trying to address with who you're writing? Right, right. Well, if you don't, if you don't know one, anyone, or if you don't, you know, uh, are able to connect with someone through a third party, I guess what you have to do is Google, just Google it, and find editors who have worked on the kind of book that you're interested in. Because that would be an emphasis, would it not, to try to match up an editor with what you were writing about? Yeah, yeah. Like, like if you're doing a fiction book, you want a fiction editor, right? A non-fiction book, non-fiction. Uh, maybe a book about finance, or someone who's worked in finance books, you know, stuff like that, yeah, for sure. Okay, got one more question. Maybe, maybe two more. Okay. Uh, I'm a new author, and maybe some other people here are also. How do we reconcile with an editor working towards what we know to be what our art should be versus what the editor is telling us, like their opinion versus their skill in our art. Right, right. Well, um, a good editor will, will, you know, will be back and forth between the author and the editor. Um, like, the editor might, might say something like, this, this part's no good, get rid of it. And then you, your job, if you really believe it, is to come back and say, well, no, it's important because of this and that. And hopefully the editor will listen and will arrive at some kind of, um, some kind of solution. Um, but you have to trust in each other. Both the editor and the writer have to trust. You have to have a bond of trust. Oh, I'm going to do one more. Okay. And then I know some other people have questions that will hopefully can get them at the end. Sure. Okay. Could you say uh, something about the difference between an editor and an agent? Yeah. Yeah, an agent's job is to, um, is to get your book sold to a publisher. But an agent will be a good editor as well. An agent will, will, for instance, your, your proposal may be kind of wonky, maybe like no good, or maybe not, maybe it's too wordy. And the agent will, will hone it down with you because the agent's good at it. But the, the, but the agent's job ends when he or she has sold your book to a publisher. And takes, they take your 15%, uh, agent offers 15% of the uh, take, and then that, that's it. Any other takes over. Does that help? Okay. Thank you. Sure.